Hello, David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games, and this is part one in a tutorial series about implementing rollback netcode in a game built with the Godot game engine. I created a reusable library called the Godot Rollback Netcode Add-on. It's open source, MIT license. Here is the GitLab project page. You can also find it on the Godot asset library. Just search for Godot Rollback Netcode. I also created a game called Retro Tank Party. It's a two to four player top-down tank battle game available on itch.io and Steam, and it uses the Godot Rollback Netcode add-on. So if you want to see it in action, you can check out Retro Tank Party. A number of other people have also started using the add-on in their games. There is a list on the project page. I hope that that list will continue to grow in time. In this part, we will cover what rollback and prediction is, how it works in excessive detail, not really excessive, but we will be stepping through an example match frame by frame and looking at what happens, uh, why you might want to use it, and what are some of the pros and cons. However, one thing we will not be doing in part one is writing any code or building a game. That is going to start in part two. So if you just want to get straight to the code, feel free to jump ahead to part two. I won't mind. All right, we need to start at the beginning. What problem is rollback and prediction even trying to solve? Let's say you have two peers. The same applies to client server, but for simplicity, we'll just look at peer to peer. Your game runs at 60 frames per second, which means you need to render a new frame every 16 milliseconds. Here's what that looks like on a timeline. We have frame one, frame two, frame three, zero milliseconds, 16 milliseconds, 32 milliseconds, and so on. Let's say these two peers have a really killer ping of 64 milliseconds. At least that'd be a killer ping for me. My internet's pretty bad. Maybe yours is better, uh, which is a latency of approximately 32 milliseconds. Ping is sending a message there and back. Latency is just one direction. So what that means is peer one, will, when it sends a message on frame one, it won't arrive to peer two until frame number three and the same the other way around. But the game needs to render a new frame every 16 milliseconds. So on frame one, a frame needs to be rendered, but peer one has no idea what peer two is doing. Frame two comes around, still has no idea what peer two is doing. Finally, frame three comes and peer one knows what peer two was doing back on frame one, but what's it gonna do with that, right? It could take its game state from frame three and just add the input from peer two to it, but that means it's basically showing the other player with a two frame delay. And presumably both players would be doing this. Both peers would be rendering with a two frame delay and that would continue throughout the match. And it would basically mean that they are not seeing or experiencing the same match. So how would rollback and prediction solve this? Well, peer one and peer two both have their own idea of what player one and player two are doing. Let's say on frame one, Player one is pressing right, player one's playing on this machine, the peer one machine, and player two is pressing left. But as we know, they have no idea what the other player is doing for two more frames when that information will finally arrive. So we get to frame two, player one is still pressing right, player two is still pressing left. We still have no idea what the other player is doing. Here comes frame three. Now, finally, this input from frame one has arrived. So we inject that into our input buffer. We're keeping a buffer of old inputs for tick number one. And so now we know that back on tick number one, player one was pressing right, player two was pressing left. We roll back the full game state to the way it was and then re-execute tick number one. Then we go to re-execute tick number two uh, but now that we have some real input, we're able to use that to predict what the other player was doing. And the easiest form of prediction is to simply assume whatever the player was pressing on the previous frame is what they're pressing on this frame. There's more sophisticated ways to do prediction where you can take into account uh, the controls of your game or how long it's been since the last real input, uh, but nothing hyper sophisticated, like you're not going to build an AI to do prediction. Um, but we will we'll look at more sophisticated ways to do prediction later in this course. All right, so now we have this predicted input. So we re-execute tick number two. We go to execute, finally, tick number three. But first, we predict its input. Again, just copying uh, the input from the previous frame. And then we finally execute frame number three. However, 
all of this occurs, the rollback and then re-simulating those ticks within the 16 millisecond budget that frame three has. So the player is not actually going to see the game state return to you know what it was two frames ago and the re-simulation happened. They're just going to see the result of having done that. So both peers start with the same initial starting state. Then we get to frame one, Player 1 is pressing right and immediately sees their tank move to the right. Player 2 is pressing left and immediately sees their tank move to the left, but both of them see their opponent sitting still. Frame 2, same thing. They continue to see their own tank moving and their opponent staying in the same place. Now, on frame 3, when the real input from the other player finally arrives, they see their opponent tank jump forward as if they had been pressing, in this case, left for three frames, and in this case, right for three frames. This jump in position is an artifact. An artifact is something that wouldn't happen in offline play. It's the result of online play, something that kind of breaks the illusion of playing the same game together. All network synchronization has some artifacts. They're impossible to remove completely, but there are techniques to minimize, reduce, try and hide them, and we'll be talking about those with respect to rollback and prediction later in this tutorial series. Returning to our timeline, we move on to frame number four, where player one is still pressing right, player two is still pressing left, and we finally received the real input from tick number two. However, the real input matches the prediction that we made, so we don't need to roll back. All we need to do is mark that input as real in our input buffer, and we can move on. Frame number five. Player one has finally changed their input. They are now pressing up. Player two has also changed their input. They are now pressing down. You can also see that our predictions are incorrect. We're still using uh, the input from the previous frame, which doesn't match. So you can tell that a rollback is coming in our future. But for now, we're also receiving the real input from tick number three. Uh, and it again matches our predictions. We simply mark it as real in our input buffer and move on. On frame number six, player one is still pressing up, player two is still pressing down. We have received the input from tick number four. Again, it matches our prediction, so we mark it as real. You can tell that on the next frame, that's when the input from tick number five is going to arrive. That's the one where the players change their input. So that's when a rollback is going to come. But before we look at that, I want to look at frame number three and frame number four really quick. These two frames, frame number three and frame number four, look identical on both peers. This is rollback and prediction at its best. We don't have the actual data, but we are still able to show two identical frames to both players. Now, it's only two frames. We know we're doing a rollback on the next frame, but this example is actually extremely condensed. <laughs> no match would actually be able to move this quickly and have humans play it. Uh, but just for example purposes, I kind of shrunk it down. In a real match, this would be dozens of frames, dozens of frames that look identical on both peers. Returning to our timeline, just for completeness, uh, we already know it's going to happen. We get to frame number seven, where we finally receive the input from tick number five, which is where we had this change in input. Since we predicted wrong, this triggers a rollback. We inject the real input, re-simulate, re-predict, re-simulate, simulate frame number seven, and move on. There's a few other pieces of rollback and prediction that we haven't discussed yet, but that I think are important to get into this introduction. So I'm just going to kind of blurt them out in no particular order on this slide. Uh, first of all, I'd like to try to make a distinction between a frame and a tick. I am sure I'm going to say the wrong thing a whole bunch of times throughout the course of this tutorial series, but I'm going to try to use the word frame to mean a rendered frame, meaning the thing that needs to happen every 16 milliseconds, no matter what, at least if you want to keep a stable 60 frames per second, and a tick to mean a single unit, a single iteration of the game simulation. And the reason we are making this distinction is because because many ticks can happen within the time span of a single frame. That's what happens every time we do a rollback. The ticks need to be roughly synchronized between peers. So when 
Peer 1 is executing tick 27 for the first time. It needs to be happening at roughly the same real-world clock time as Peer 2. These will never be perfectly synchronized, but uh, the Godot rollback netcode add-on uh, has some techniques to try and nudge them into rough synchronization, which needs to happen in order for this whole system to work. We need to be able to quickly save and load the full game state. So at the end of every tick, we are going to save the whole game state. And when we do a rollback, we're actually getting that old state out of our state buffer and loading it into the game. And lastly, all of the game logic in a game implementing rollback and prediction needs to be deterministic. Deterministic means with the same starting state, applying the same input will lead to the same resulting state. And this is super important because with rollback and prediction, we are only synchronizing input. Other network synchronization techniques will synchronize state or a mix of input and state, but in pure rollback and prediction, we are only synchronizing input. And if there are situations where the game will take the same state, apply the same input, and sometimes get different resulting state, then the peers will go out of sync. So when would you want to use rollback and prediction as opposed to some other form of network synchronization? Well, in a game with a small number of players, roughly two to eight, that is session or match-based. There is some debate on the Snowpack Games Discord as to the true maximum number of players, but you aren't going to be able to do 60-player matches, 100-player matches, certainly no MMOs with a thousand players on the same server and nothing with a persistent world. Uh, rollback and prediction works fine for client server, but it works great for peer to peer, which is awesome because peer to peer tends to be pretty cheap to run and requires very little maintenance. It's actually the reason that I personally started making my games peer to peer. It's great for high speed action games like competitive fighting games. There's a reason that rollback and prediction is most commonly used in competitive fighting games, and that's because it's a great fit. So, your Mortal Kombat's, your Smash Bros. It's also great for games with lots of objects simulated, but very little input. Uh, like we talked about before, we're only synchronizing the inputs, not game state. So let's say you have a real-time strategy game with four players. Each player has 200 units in their army. That's 800 units. Synchronizing all of that state would be quite difficult, but you only have four humans at a keyboard and mouse. They can only generate so much input. So rollback and prediction is also a great fit for real-time strategy games or other games with tons of objects being simulated. If your game doesn't roughly match what I'm laying out here on this slide, then rollback and prediction probably isn't the right choice for you, and you should consider some other form of network synchronization. All forms of network synchronization have pros and cons. There is no one right or one best form of network synchronization. Uh, it will depend on your game, but also your team and your resources. So some of those pros with regard to rollback and prediction, your character moves right away. You don't have to wait for some sort of validation from the server. The other players continue to move even when input is missing because we're doing the prediction. And your inputs are always respected on the tick that you made them. So let's say you pressed a button on tick 77. No matter what, that button is going to be respected on tick 77. This is actually pretty unique. This one point uh, I think is unique to rollback and prediction, which leads directly into eventual accuracy. So I like to say that rollback and prediction is the most accurate form of network synchronization given a very specific definition of accurate because during the match what you are seeing will probably not be a fully accurate representation of what's happening in the match because uh, there is latency there are rollbacks there are artifacts but at the end of the match the result of the match will be 100% accurate to all of the inputs that all of the players made on the ticks that they made them 
And fairness, there is kind of a general theme of fairness to all of the systems involved in rollback and prediction. It's all aiming to make sure that no player has an unfair advantage regardless of their latency, whether they have a high or low latency. It tries to make everything as fair as possible, which is why I think it's a good fit for competitive games. It also has some cons. Uh, for example, a single player with high lag can drag the whole match down. Other forms of network synchronization are more robust to this. Um, and there is some debate on the Snowbank Games Discord again about how strong this effect is, but I have definitely seen it. It is real. Uh, it is one of the primary cons. And the Biggest con, I think, uh, is that it is quite hard to implement rollback and prediction. It's one of the hardest forms of network synchronization to implement correctly. Of course, we have some tools for you. We have the Godot rollback netcode add-on, but I don't think there is any world where implementing rollback and prediction becomes easy. All we can do is make it easier. So that's all I've got for you in this part. Please let me know if you have any questions. In the next part, we will finally start building an example game with the Godot rollback netcode add-on. I can't wait. See you then. Bye-bye.